Coming up on today's show, BMW unveils the all-electric iX3 concept SUV and promises that it will come to market very soon. What consumers think of Tesla and Ford kills all of its passenger cars to focus on SUVs and pickup trucks, but some will be electric, so that's okay, right? These stories and more coming next. Happy Friday, folks. Yes, it's time for another week's worth of news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. And for the first time in a really long time, there's only one Tesla story this week. Shock horror. We're starting today's show in Beijing, where BMW unveiled the all-electric concept iX3 SUV, previewing a production vehicle we can expect to see on the market in about two years' time, the iX3 concept is powered by a battery pack that BMW says is greater than 70 kilowatt hours, produces more than 200 kilowatts at the wheels, and comes with a range in excess of 250 miles, or 400 kilometers, on the new WLTP test cycle. There's not a huge amount of information about this, what with it being a concept car, but it's worth noting that the iX3 concept looks just like the regular X3 SUV, which should gain it plenty of fans. Throw in 150 kilowatt quick charging and plenty of room for luggage, and this is a very interesting car indeed. I'll let you know when BMW is ready to share more information, and as always, I'll share it with you. For the past 10 years or so, the name Tesla has become synonymous with fast, powerful, luxury electric cars, and its unique attitude to sales and service has also gained it great reputation when compared to many traditional auto brands. But YouGov's latest brand index shows that Tesla's buzz score, essentially how the brand is viewed, has fallen quite significantly of late, dropping from 10 to negative 0.8 in just one month. This puts Tesla below many mainstream brands. The answer to a second question, revolving around whether people thought Tesla represented good or poor quality, has also fallen of late, dropping from 23 in early March to 14.7, the lowest the brand has suffered since the start of 2017. Luckily, Tesla does come out above GM and Volkswagen in this question, but it does show that outside the EV world, Tesla's reputation isn't what it once was. Volkswagen may yet have to make any meaningful impact on the electric vehicle world in terms of production electric cars, but this week it unveiled a custom-built race car that it hopes will help it earn some much-needed electric car brownie points. Enter the Volkswagen IDR Pikes Peak, a single-seat, super-lightweight racer that Volkswagen will enter into the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in June. Piloted by Romain Dumas, who won both the 2016 and 2017 races in an internal combustion engine car, Volkswagen says the IDR Pikes Peak sets the trend for its future in motorsport and is of great symbolic significance. We'll have to wait until June to see if it lives up to that hype. The all-new 2018 Nissan LEAF hasn't had the easiest of times since its launch late last year, getting flack for its restricted DC quick charging speed after the second or third rapid charge on a long-distance trip. But this week, there was some good news for Nissan's family EV after the European crash test body Euro NCAP awarded it a five-star rating. Taking on the new 2018 crash tests, which include for the first time new tests for pedestrian and cyclist protection, the LEAF managed 93% for adult passengers and 86% for child occupants in terms of scores. In protection for vulnerable road users, though, the LEAF scored a 71%, the same as its score for safety assistance technologies, making it the safest electric car that Nissan has produced to date. If you're interested in the full report, I'll link to it in the show notes below. After years of flip-flopping on electric vehicles, Nissan's luxury brand Infiniti has confirmed that it's building a brand new vehicle platform exclusively for electric vehicles, and it will be based on the Q Inspiration concept car. As a brand, Infiniti has promised that it will go electric from 2021 onwards, but dig a little deeper, and in this case, electric means electrified, which does include hybrid and plug-in hybrid, as well as hydrogen fuel cell vehicles into the mix. 2021 will be the year we'll first see an all-electric Infiniti model, however, and the company says it hopes that more than half of its global sales will be of electrified cars, there's that word again, by 2025. What isn't so clear, however, is why it's taken Infiniti so long to jump on the electric bandwagon, especially as it displayed its first electric concept back in 2011, and its parent company, Nissan, has been plugging cars in for nearly a decade. Aside 
from being one of the fastest growing markets for electric vehicles, China's luxury car market is also growing at an astonishing rate, with automakers even designing and building special long wheelbase variants just for the Chinese market. It's no wonder then that the Beijing Auto Show was the place Mercedes chose to unveil the Maybach Ultimate Luxury Concept, a highbrow all-electric SUV that combines 550 kilowatts of all-electric all-wheel drive power with an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, 350 kilowatt DC quick charging, and of course, all the luxury you can imagine. It's not clear if this will ever make it into production, but considering just a few years ago, we'd have never dreamed of seeing an all-electric Maybach, it just shows how seriously big brands are finally taking EVs. Staying in China, Toyota used the Beijing Auto Show to confirm that it intends to bring a slew of new plug-in models to China over the next few years, including an all-electric version of its CHR crossover. Given China has been pushing hard for automakers to make the switch, it's no surprise that Toyota is among the automakers trying to get another electric vehicle into its lineup. But for the automaker who has bashed electric vehicles almost constantly in favor of hybrid and hydrogen for the last decade, it's unclear if this all-electric CHR will be Chinese only or if we'll see it elsewhere in the world. With a launch date of 2020, we've got a few years to find out. As electric vehicles have increased in popularity, we've seen more and more local and regional governments mandate that new buildings be designed with electric vehicle charging infrastructure in mind. To date, though, we've seen very little on national scales. Until now, that is, because the EU Parliament has just confirmed new legislation that will require all new and majorly renovated buildings with more than 10 parking spaces to be built, with dedicated high-power wiring in place for later installation of electric vehicle charging stations. Additionally, these buildings will need to commission and install at least one charging station before they are commissioned themselves, which should make electric vehicle infrastructure more ubiquitous across the entirety of the EU. It's not become a law yet, but it's hoped that it will be approved in the next few weeks and become law shortly thereafter. It's been no secret that the world has been moving away from small, compact, efficient cars and towards large SUVs and pickup trucks, especially in the US. And with profits much higher on SUVs and pickup trucks than small family cars, a lot of automakers are starting to ditch small segment cars completely. This week, Ford became the latest to do so, announcing that it's going to kill all of its non-SUV or pickup models, with the exception of the Ford Mustang, as it prepares to ready itself for the next chapter of its life. Even the Focus will get killed, although the name will live on as a crossover of some sorts. You might think that this would be bad news for EVs, but Ford did reiterate as part of this announcement that it still plans to electrify most of its product lineup in the near future, including 16 all-electric models over the next five years. But a small city hatchback? No, not an EV. That's not going to happen unless it's a crossover electric SUV. In last week's show, I brought you the news that Walmart was going to be partnering with Electrify America to bring super-fast charging stations to Walmarts across the US. This week, it's the turn of Target, which has announced that a triple partnership will be seeing it doing exactly the same thing. Unlike Walmart's partnerships, however, Target will be installing 600 charging stations at stores throughout the country with Electrify America, ChargePoint, and Tesla working together. Not only will this give Target more diversity of charging, but it should help ensure the charging stations it's installing are the best they can possibly be, because there's nothing like some healthy competition to bring out the best in a company. If you've been following the US and the announcement earlier on this month that the current administration intends to roll back its future corporate average fuel economy targets for automakers, you might be interested to hear that a federal judge has prevented the same administration from cutting fines currently levied against automakers who fail to meet current CAFE targets. Under plans set by the previous administration, the fine for automakers who fail to meet current fuel economy targets was due to rise from $55 per mile per gallon over target per car sold to $140 per mile per gallon over target per car sold. The Trump administration had wanted to stop that increase, but the state of New York had sued and the federal appeals court has sided with New York, stating that the fine will increase. Will this affect plans to knock back cafe standards for 2022 onwards? Well, probably not, but it's a small victory for those who want to see fuel economies increase and fossil fuel consumptions fall. 
In last week's show, I brought you the news that Volvo's Polestar division had begun to divulge information about its production Polestar 1 plug-in hybrid. This week, we finally got a price for the US, but it won't be cheap. At a total list price of 155,000 US dollars, it's pretty darned expensive. That said, in China, where it will be built, the car will cost nearly $230,000, so I guess we can't complain that much. Given that Polestar has previously hinted that the Polestar 1 will be available through only a subscription service, think rental but with everything including insurance thrown in, the cost, though, is a bit of a moot point. While we're in Sweden, though, Volvo, Polestar's parent company, has announced that it plans to have 50% of all Volvo car sales to be electric by 2025. Additionally, this does include vehicles sold in China, where Volvo is working hard to claim a big market share. Yet again, however, Volvo's use of the word electric and electrified is a little nebulous, so it's difficult to put an exact figure on just how many all-electric models Volvo hopes to be producing and selling by 2025. Either way, with the number of plug-in models promised to hit the market in the next few years, I think electric will undoubtedly soon be the fuel of choice for many consumers. What do you think? And finally, the world of electric flight may still be some way from being ready to offer us commercial short haul. But earlier this month, Bi Aerospace announced that its prototype Sunflyer 2 aircraft had completed its maiden test flight showing that single-engined electric flight is just around the corner for everyone. What makes this particular airplane interesting is that it's built specifically as a flight trainer, a lightweight, easy-to-control aircraft that flying schools can use to teach people to fly. With the operating cost of $3 per hour, that's 10 times less to fuel than a conventional piston-engined flight trainer, it will soon be followed to market by a four-seat version called the Sun Flyer 4. Both, by Aerospace says, will be the first FAA-certified US-sponsored all-electric planes that you'll be able to buy. There's no word on pricing yet, but when I have it, I'll share. And that, sadly, is the end of this week's show. As always, don't forget to like, comment, slap that notification bell to make sure you don't miss an episode, and don't forget to subscribe to Transport Evolved Take 2 as well if you'd like to have some more informal videos from myself and the rest of the TE crew. And of course, if you're up for helping us keep this network running, be sure to follow the links below to make your donations. I'll be back next week, but the week after that, I'll be in Reno, Nevada for a certain well-known furcon, but this is your advance warning. And if you happen to be in Reno, Nevada, keep your eyes peeled on Twitter because I'm planning a bit of a meetup either before or after the con somewhere in town. Well, that really is it for now. Have a great weekend, and as always, keep evolving.